meeting the lovely co-star of ABC's Here We Go Again, Nita Talbot. And we'll be meeting her in our game number two. And the other, the announcement that one week from today, the dating game is going to begin revealing the names of ten lovely, beautifully, delightful ladies. In fact, as far as we're concerned, they will be the most dateable girls in the whole wide world. So, next month, finding out who those gorgeous gals are. But today, we've got some other gorgeous surprises awaiting us, and so have our bachelors, right after this message. Okay. There they go. All right, bachelor number one is majoring in sociology right now, but he plans on attending law school. He lettered in water polo and swimming. He collects coins, and his name is John Larson. John, welcome to the show. Good luck. A psychology student, bachelor number two, is a college freshman. He's won gymnastic awards. He likes scuba diving. He enjoys playing football and backpacking. Here is Marty Cheadle. Marty, good luck to you. <laughs> bachelor number three plans on attending college and eventually entering the insurance business. He's won speech awards. He's a football letterman, and he likes all sports. Please welcome Alan Kay. Alan, good luck to you. And those are the three most outstanding young bachelors for today's game number one. Now, to prevent our young lady from hearing the introductions of our three bachelors, we've been keeping her isolated, offstage, in a soundproof, sightproof room. I would like you to meet her right now. She'll be returning to college where she plans on studying to be a dental hygienist. She loves to swim, she rides horseback, and she enjoys sewing. Please help me extend a warm dating game. Welcome to Carol Penn. Hello, Carol. Back a a little bit by the chair. There you go. We don't want you to see the bachelors, obviously. Your decision's going to be made solely on how they sound to you, which one you think is the, the most best for you. Okay, all right. We'll start with a how do you do and see how they sound. Uh, number one, would you please say good afternoon to Carol? How do you do, Carol? Number two. Hi, right, Carol. And number three. Hi, Carol. All right, they're all set. You ready to go? Okay. All right, have a seat now. Make yourself comfortable. You can begin anytime you want. Bachelors, stand by. Here we go. Bachelor number one. You know I'm a pen, but if you were a piece of paper, what things would you like me to scribble all over you? Oh, I, I think lots of little hearts and big hearts and little love notes and just all little sayings like that, I guess. How, what kind of love notes? Private little love notes. Oh, private. How, that's number two, same question. Well, I just hope you don't run out of ink, but I'd hope you'd write your vital statistics and, you know, little things like that. And, Draw a picture of yourself on my arm so I can carry your image everywhere. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> okay. About to number three. We are in the Cathedral of Love. Turn to the lover's hymn, 136, and sing it to me loud and clear. I need you, I want you, I have to have you. <laughs> you have to have me? Okay. Most definitely. That's a number three, same question. That was number three. Oh, two, same question. See, my hymn, huh? I hymn. When yeah. the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's <laughs> some old. Oh. <laughs> that's good. Okay, back to number one. Some guys say it with flowers, but you say it with foods. Tell me what you would serve me to... Tell me what you would serve me to let me know exactly what you are built like. Oh, what I was built like? Yeah. Oh, it'd have to be something like beef steak, something really tough meat, you know, strenuous meat. That what just... part of your body would be meat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd have to say my shoulders and arms. Your shoulders and arms? What's your brain like? Oh, uh, my brain? Yeah. Gray matter. What is it? Gray matter? Right. Okay. Back to number t one. What are you going to fill my romantic doggy, doggy bag with so I can take you home and enjoy you later? Um, probably uh, some good Swedish dish, I guess. And Sweet. Later on, you could eat it and remember me and get it stuck between your teeth and carry something around <laughs> just to <laughs> have you think of me. You mean Swedish for nationality or sweet? I think he meant Swedish. Swedish? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Bout to number one, same question. That was number, all oh, of the number one, you know. <laughs> Bout to number two, I'm going to... What'd I put in a doggy bag, huh? <laughs> oh. I want to take you home, so come on, give me something. Probably... <laughs> probably my tail. <laughs> Your tail? Don't ask me why. <laughs> you have a tail? Are you a rabbit? 
Well... <laughs> okay. Kind of hard to go into my anatomy. <laughs> okay, back to number three. Superman has a big red S on his shirt, and Batman has a bat. You have a picture of bachelor number two on your chest. What does that make you? Sick. <laughs> okay. Bachelor number two. Same question about bachelor number three. Give it to me. I'd have a saggy t-shirt. <laughs> you have a what? I'd have a saggy t-shirt. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Okay. Bout to number one. Using sounds only, describe our first year of marriage. Our first year of marriage? Yes. <laughs> Enough. Okay. <laughs> now using sounds only, only, describe our 75th year. Same. Uh, mm. Same bout to number one. <laughs> That's it. That's the end of the game. I'm sorry, Carol. Now you're going to have to make up your mind. So relax, think about it, and decide. And while Carol is choosing one of our three bachelors as a date, we'll take a little time for you to watch these important messages. When are you too old to drink Kool-Aid? You can be too old. Every sugar, let's go. Winter time, and your crew's working up an appetite. Don't they deserve your best? Then start with creamy, fresh, best foods, real mayonnaise. Only real mayonnaise is light and delicate enough to turn everyday tuna into a special treat. And real mayonnaise is the other name for best foods. Easy tuna recipes right on the jar. For your family. Welcome back to the dating game, and Carol, you're going to have to decide now which one of the bachelors is the lucky one, the one that appealed to you the most. Was it bachelor number one, bachelor number two, or bachelor number three? Which is the guy? Bachelor number one. Number one, all right, number one. Well, actually, Carol, they all played a good game. Is there any reason why you chose number one? Uh, I guess I couldn't think of anyone else. <laughs> well, you, there are two others. They are two and three. <laughs> Actually, you asked him most of the questions anyway, so before you meet him, I'd like you to meet the other guys. Bachelor number two is a psychology student. He's a college freshman. He's won gymnastic awards. He likes scuba diving, enjoys football. Marty Cheadle. Marty, come on and say hi to Carol, please. Number two. Thank you, Marty. You forgot your number. <laughs> also didn't choose number three. He planned on attending college and eventually entering the insurance business. He won speech awards. He likes all sports. Had some great answers to Alan Kay. Alan, come on and say hi to Carol. Thank you, Alan. Good job. And now number one, your choice. I'd like to tell you something about... Pukey dirt. Neil Dressler and his two new opponents. Today, he'll be trying for his second chance to win one of these new 1974 Pontiacs. The racy Firebird two-door hardtop, the spacious Le Mans Safari four-door station wagon, the exciting Grand Am two-door hardtop, the sporty Ventura hatchback two-door coupe, or the luxurious Catalina four-door hardtop. Today, on Split Second. And now, the host of our show, Tom Kennedy. Hey, terrific. What a good-looking group we have today. How's everybody feeling? <laughs> you look better than that. <laughs> We're happy to have you with us. We're terribly distressed because we've gone for a whole day here without giving away a car, and that's, that's a sad, sad item. But Neil Dressler is back today attempting uh, his second win. Neil, if you win today, you have a one out of four chance. 
And uh, it was very smart of you. You played it yesterday, so you wouldn't win the car. So today we would have 200 bucks in the cash jackpot. Very cagey. It wasn't easy. No, I know that. I know that. We have two new opponents for you. Jack Clark, would you introduce them, please? I sure will, Tom. We have a substitute teacher, a mother of three from Hacienda Heights, California, Joan Douglas. And a bachelor and a student from Beverly Hills, California, Stuart Weiss. first round, if you have a single answer, you get $25. If all three of you are right, you get $5 each, but if two of you are right, 10 bucks each. Let's get some of those bucks, huh? Look at the board. Mary, Mary, My Fair Lady, All the Way Home. Each of these titles of a Broadway or Hollywood production is actually a line from a famous nursery rhyme. Joan? Mary, Mary, quite contrary. Right. Match each two. It's nursery rhyme. Neil? All the Way Home is, uh... Mother Goose. Wrong, Stuart. Lay home three little pigs. That, uh, no, that's wrong. That's from this little piggy. And my fair lady from London Bridge is falling down, and that's a single answer worth $25 for Joan Duff. Off and running. And now, look at the board. The state, its capital, its chief crop. Match these to this Midwestern state. Take a look. Stuart. Iowa. Right. Neil. Its capital, Iowa City. Wrong, and Joan. Uh, Des Moines is its capital. That's right, and its chief crop is corn. $10 each for Joan and for Stewart. And now look at the board. Lateral, field goal, interception. Pick one of these and tell me. In football, is it considered an offensive or defensive play, Stewart? Field goal, yes. Offensive. <laughs> That's right. Neil? Lateral is offensive. Right, and Joan, interception? Uh, defensive. You're all three right, $5 apiece. And now here is today's memory buster. So listen carefully. Ringo... Donnie, Mahatma, Elvis, Merle. Which of these are not the first names of three of the singing Osmond brothers, Stuart? Mahatma. Right, and Joan? Uh, Ringo. Right, and Neil? Earl. No, Elvis was the third. Donnie and Merle are Osmond, so it's $10 each for Joan and for Stuart, and Joan's our leader so far. We will continue round one right after these words. Don't you go away. Welcome back. We're in round one of today's split second. Neil Dressler is back today attempting his second win, as we said just a moment ago. Studying medicine in Guadalajara. Right, Tom. I've been trying to find a way to combine my linguistics background with medical training. And so far, I can send out bills in seven languages. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Every bit helps. And uh, Joan Douglas is new to our show today. Let's find out about Joan. Well, I'm a substitute teacher for Roland Unified District, and I have a wonderful husband, John, and three tremendous children that are in the audience, uh, John Jr., William, and Victoria. Okay. And I want a full-time job because I just got my credential this year, and I had been a petroleum chemist years ago, and I went back into teaching at, at a you know, little later age. Yeah, well, I hope you find that full-time job soon. Thank you. All righty. Stuart Weiss. Tell us about Stuart. Tom, I'm a single student. We'll be attending San Jose State in the fall. I'm going to take up political science, try to become a lawyer. Very good. Good luck to you in the field. Thank You're you. $25, Stuart, and Joan has $50, and Neil has 5 as we continue round one. Look at the board. The singer, the comedy star, and City of Recording match each of these to this dialogue from an album recorded, recorded together by a British-born singer and an American comedy star. Listen. Listen, do you remember the last time we did a show like this together? Yes, John. Uh, Julie, uh, <laughs> Time. Let's listen now to the rest of the clue. Oh, and we had so much fun, we couldn't wait to do it again. Mm -hmm. And we vowed we wouldn't let another birthday go by before we did another show together. Yeah. Just think. Yes, Neil. The comedy star is Carol Burnett. Right, and Stuart. The singer is Julie Andrews. Right, and the city of recording, New York City at Lincoln Center. Julie and Carol at Lincoln Center. $10 each for Neil and for Stuart. And now look at the board. 2,069 miles, 1,631 miles, and 7,623 miles. These are the lengths of the three U.S. coastlines. Match each coastline to the body of water it borders, Stuart. Uh, 7,623 is the Pacific Ocean. Right, Neil. 2,069 is the Atlantic Ocean. Right. Joan. 1,631 is the uh, Mexico. Do we give her credit? Yes. You started it before the buzzer. It is the Gulf of Mexico. Three correct answers, $5 apiece. Look at the board. Olives, grapes, peanuts. Each of these foods supplies one of the two basic ingredients for salad dressing. Pick one, Stuart. Peanut is oil. That's right. Pick one and tell me, does it provide the oil or the vinegar, Neil? Olives are oil. That's right. Joan, how about the grapes? Uh, grapes would be vinegar. That's right. All three, $5 apiece. Film sizes. Raw film stock. 
now used in making motion pictures, comes in five different millimeter sizes. Name three of them, Neil. 16 millimeters. That's right. And Joan? Uh, eight millimeter. Right. And that's eight or, uh, yes. And Stuart? 22 millimeter? No. There is the eight, which is also called the straight eight millimeter, super eight, and the others are 35 millimeter and 65 millimeter. Two correct answers, $10 each for Neil and for Joan. And the 65 millimeter, incidentally, is processed as 70 millimeter. Now look at the board. Man Frowning, Man Laughing, their TV show. Match each to these two popular TV performers. Take a look. Yes, Stuart. Man Smiling is Jack Klugman. That's right. Joan. Man uh, frowning is Tony Randall. Right. And their TV show, Neil? The Odd Couple. You're all three right for five bucks a piece. Look at the board. Nu, dingo, platypus. Pick one of these animals and give me the correct plural spelling of its name, Neil. News, G-N-U-S. Right. And Joan. Platypuses. P-L-A-T-Y-P-U-S-E-S. -E right. And how about the dingo, Stuart? D-I-N-G-O-S. No, it's D-I-N-G-O-E-S. $10 each for Joan and Neil. And I'll look at the board. Peter Pan's, Mary Jane's, Dr. Denton's. Pick one of these items of wearing apparel and tell me yes or no. Neil? Dr. Denton's, yes. That's a correct answer. <laughs> Do they cover the toes is the question. And Stuart? Mary Jane's, yes. That's right. Shows with straps for little girls. Joan, how about Peter Pan's? I would say no. That's right. They're colors. Three correct answers. Five dollars a piece. This is on games. Of the 14 foreign language versions of Monopoly, three are languages that originated in Asia. Give me the three languages, Neil. Japanese. Right. Joan? Chinese. Right. And Stuart? Korean? No. Hebrew is the third. Ten dollars each for Joan. And for Neil, Joan's in the lead. And Neil's in second place. Look at the board. Nice locks, a sure thus, and dairy tonic. Each of these is a, that's diary tonic. Each of these is a scramble for the name of a book one might use to look up a word. Neil. A sure thus is thesaurus. That's right. Uh, match each to the appropriate book. And Stuart? Dictionary, uh, dairy tonic is a dictionary. Right. And how about nice locks, Joan? Ah, uh, they were nice, but I can't think of it. Lexicon. Ten dollars each for Neil and for Stuart. And now look, and that takes care of round one. Our leader is Joan Douglas going into round two. And we'll double the stakes in round two right after this. If two of you are right, you get $25 each, and if all three are right, $10 each. Joan Douglas, our leader, with $100. And in second place, our current champ, Neil Dressler, with uh, $75. And Stuart Weiss with $65. Round two, look at the board. G.I. Joe, Doughboy, Johnny Reb. Each of these nicknames was first given to American fighting men, Neil. Doughboy, World War I. Right. During a certain war, match each to its war, Stuart. G.I. Joe is World War II. Right. And Joan, Johnny, Johnny Reb. Uh, that's Civil War. Right. All three for $10 a piece. And now look at the board. The wife, the husband, which birthday. Match these to this famous movie producer and his beautiful wife, who this year is celebrating one of her most important birthdays. Take a look. Neil. The wife is Sophia Lawrence. Right. Stuart. The husband is Dino De Laurentiis. Wrong. Joan. Uh, the wife is Carlo Ponti. That's... Uh, <laughs> I mean, the husband. You know what I meant. That's a correct answer. Yes, of course. <laughs> Sorry. Because if it were the other way around, we're all in trouble. Which birthday? The 40th birthday. Two correct answers. 25 each for Joan and for Neil. And now look at the board. Pears, apples, cherries. Give me the state which leads in the growing of each of these fruits, Neil. Cherries is Washington. Wrong. And Joan. Apples are Washington. Right. And Stewart. Pears is Idaho. Wrong. For pears, it's California. For cherries, it's Michigan. Single answer, $50 for Joan Douglas. Joan's in the lead. Neil's in second place. Television commercials. A current animated television commercial advertising a men's hairspray features three of the top comic book heroes of all time. Stewart. Superman. Right. Or Clark Kent. Each of you name one. Neil? Batman. That's a wrong answer. Joan? Uh, Captain Marvel. Right. Or Billy Batson, we would also have uh, accepted. Or Dick Tracy was the third. So that's two correct answers. $25 each for Joan and for Stuart. And now look at the board. Lionel Hampton, Jack Teagarden, and Louis Armstrong. Match each of these all-time jazz greats to the primary instrument he played, Stuart. Uh, Lionel Hampton, the vibraphone. Right. Neil? Louis Armstrong is a trumpet. Right. Joan, how about Jack Teagarden? Uh, that sliding thing, the trombone. That's right. All three, $10 apiece. And now look at the board. Flower number one, number two, and number three. Match each of the flowers you're about to see to its name. Take a look. 
Yes, Stuart. Flower number two is the sunflower. Right, Joan. Number one is the da are the daisies. That's right. How about number three, Neil? Uh, how about a pansy? No. How about a snapdragon? <laughs> Ten, twenty-five dollars each for Joan and for Stuart. And Stuart is now in second place. Look at the board. The Nile, the Amazon, the Mississippi. Pick one of these great world rivers and match it to the general compass direction in which it flows, Stuart. The Nile flows north. Right, Neil. The Amazon flows south. Wrong, Joan. Uh, the Mississippi flows south. Right, the Amazon east. 25 each for Joan and Stuart. Presidential elections. Aside from the Democrats and Republicans, three other political parties ran candidates for U.S. president in 1912. Name one of the political parties, Stuart. The Bull Moose Party. That's right, or Progressive. And they ran the te pardon me, Theodore Roosevelt. Neil? The Populist Party. Wrong, Joan. Um, the other two were the Socialist Party, which ran Eugene V. Debs, and the Prohibition Party, which ro ran Eugene Chafin. Single answer, $50 for Stuart White. And now look at the board. Aspen, Portillo, and Garmish. Each of these popular ski resorts is located in one of the great mountain ranges, Joan. The Rockies for Aspen. That's a correct answer in Colorado. Uh, one of the great mountain ranges of the world. Match each to the mountain range. Neil. Garmisch is the Alps. That's right, in West Germany. And Stuart, how about Portillo? Portillo is the Andes. Right, in Chile. Three correct answers, $10 apiece. Look at the board. The hero, his girlfriend, the body of water. Match these to Jack Clark's interpretation of the title hero of a poem who was born near a certain body of water as described by Longfellow. Take a look. Neil? The hero is Hiawatha. Right, and Stuart? Uh, the body of water is... Uh, Time, Joan? His girlfriend, Minnie Tonka. No, Minnie Ha Ha, or Laughing Water. The body of water was Gitchigumi. Single answer, $50 for Neil Dressler. That puts Neil back in second place. Joan is still in the lead as we look at the board. Empire, Maverick, Steve Canyon. Each of these defunct TV series featured a regular actor or actress. Neil? Maverick, James Garner. Wrong. Whose last name was Moore. Match each to the correct first name. Joan? Uh, Maverick was uh, Roger Moore. Right. And Stewart? Steve, Steve Canyon was... Rod Bill Moore? No, Mary Tyler Moore. And for Empire was Terry Moore. Single answer, $50 for Joan Douglas. In the lead, Neil's in second place. This is on U.S. Ambassador. The U.S. is currently represented by an ambassador in only four foreign nations whose names begin with the letter A. Each